Welcome to Collecting Chaos. My name is James, and today we're going to talk about staples. That's right. Today we're going to talk about staples, in particular the staples that you find on a comic book. And uh, the reason for this is they're more important than you think. And I was going to do this on a short video, you know, five, you know, under a minute. I started getting into it and realized it's going to take more than a minute. So, yeah. Uh, but before we start talking about staples, we probably should talk about the staple itself and, and what makes up a staple. Now, I know that sounds kind of silly, but there are different parts to the staple. And, and in particular, there are different parts to the comic book related to the staple. Now, I made a few <laughs> uh, props here, so don't, uh, <laughs> don't, don't kill me too bad in the comments for uh, my, my drawing ability, okay? And, but we're going to start with a staple, and everybody knows this is basically a staple. What you have is you have two different parts on this staple. You have the lateral bar, uh, which is that part that you can see on the outside of the comic, on the cover, hopefully, provided the cover is still attached. And then you have the staple hole, which is the part where the staple actually goes through the comic book. And I'm not showing that on here, obviously. Then you have a staple page. The staple page is also called the center fold. We used to call it staple page many years ago. Most people don't. Most people just call it a centerfold because that's where it is. Uh, although technically a centerfold is something that would fold out, as in like a Playboy. Center page is the staple page because that's where the staples poke through the magazine or the comic. Next, we have staple extenders. That's this part. That's the part that folds over to hold the comic or magazine or whatever it is in place. Uh, that's pretty important part too. And sometimes, you know, when you're playing around with staples or you're trying to remove them because you're going to do something with the comic, those will break off. Well, if it's missing a staple extender, the staple is broken and you might as well not have a staple at all. Next, we have a uh, staple pop. And what a staple pop is, when that the cover of the comic is loose and not just loose but it breaks away from the staple that's a staple pop now this does not always mean the cover is detached from the staple i know that sounds weird but it's true but it's still the same thing um, because sometimes what happens is is it'll tear right along the staple but only part of it and and the cover is still attached by a, a small piece of paper going under the staple. But that's a staple pop. You have it and it's not. And, and we started seeing more and more of these as people started trying to do uh, pressings and really were not sure of what they were doing. I popped a few in my time. Uh, but once I learned that you have to protect the staple on the inside of the comic, in other words, you put some backing boards or something in the middle of the comic, to separate it so that that staple won't get crushed and popped out. I've had less and less. I haven't had a staple pop on me probably in the last five or six years, uh, maybe longer. Finally, when a staple pops, what happens? If you're like me, you go in and you reinforce it. <laughs> staple reinforcement or staple reinforced, which is the... Uh, error you would see or the defect you would see on a on a comic book coming back from CGC, CBCS, PGX or any other grading company. Uh, what that means is someone has gone through and reinforced the paper with tape or uh, archival uh, paper or tingojo or uh, mending tape, whatever that's staple reinforcement and sometimes it'll affect the grade sometimes it won't sometimes it'll make you if you use tape the chances are what you're going to end up with is a restored grade uh, if you're using uh, 
can go Joe or um, mending tissue or mending tape, you'll probably get a conserved grade for that. Uh, so that's that's your basic um, staple anatomy, if you will. So next, what I want to talk about is missing staples. Now, I have seen so much stuff on the internet about this. I see it on CGC forums, CBCS forums, and yes, I do check those out once in a while. I've seen it on Reddit. I've seen it in, on eBay uh, where they say, missing staple, rare. <laughs> you know, I've seen it in a lot of different places. Missing staples aren't rare. Let I me mean, get that out right up front. There are two times where missing staples absolutely 100% do not affect the grade of the comic, no matter what the grade. And I have argued with people over this. The first time between 1943 and 1946, when a lot of comic book companies went to one staple in the center of the spine to help with the war effort. Yeah, I know a staple isn't much help. But when you're making millions of comics, yeah, okay, that, that adds up a little bit. You might get, you know, um, maybe something out of it. <laughs> uh, maybe you'll get a fender for a Jeep or something. I don't know. Um, the next time that I saw uh, that I've seen a lot of missing staples is 1953, where a lot of comics only have a top staple and no bottom staple. They're not there from the factory. Most grading companies are going to ding you on that and say, well, you know, it's not going to be near mint because it's missing a staple. No. And the reason I say no is 1953, if we think about it for a second, that is when the Korean War went into a ceasefire. A ceasefire which is still going on to this day. So... A lot of comics from 1953 only have the top staple. They don't have a bottom staple. I've never seen a 1953 comic that only has the bottom staple and no top. It's always just the top staple. And I suspect companies like Dell and DC, which are the most of the ones that I've seen, because that's most of what I have, will show, will have that missing staple on the bottom, but not on the top. But for some reason... It gets dinged. Shouldn't, but it does. So what kind of ding are we talking about for a missing staple? It's not bad. Um, now, to me, the war years and the 1953, those should never affect the grade regardless. Even if it comes out of 9.8 or higher, it should not affect the grade. On a normal comic, however, say... A comic that's printed yesterday or a comic that's printed 20 years ago or even 30 years ago or even in the mid 60s if it's missing either the top or the bottom staple but has no hole so the staple was was missing from the production line or from the printing press the comic shouldn't get above a 9.4 which is near mint uh, so it shouldn't be able to get a mint grade because it is a manufacturer's defect. It should have had two staples and only has one. That is a manufacturer's defect. The reason I'm saying it shouldn't get above a 9.4, 9.4 is near mint. Above that, we have near mint plus, which no, I don't think it should get that. And then higher than that. The other reason is in this little book here, the Comics Grading Guide, if you have one, turn to where it says 9.4, and you will see under staples, uh, in rare cases, a comic was not stapled at the bindery and therefore has a missing staple. This is not considered a defect. Okay? But if we go to 9.6... If I can find it. I have a bookmark and I still can't find it. Oh, the bookmark fell out. Um, it doesn't say anything about that. 
just says tight and flat, no spine roll or split allowed. So that's why I'm saying 9.4 is the highest grade that it should receive if it's missing one staple and is not from 1953 or 1943 to 1946. Of course, the chances of you having a high grade comic of any type, uh, which to me is very fine or above, or very fine plus or above, is rare. It, it, they just, they're really hard to find uh, in that grade. So you really don't have to worry about it too much. Chances are whatever you grade it at is right. It's the newer comics uh, that are easier to find in high grade. Next, now that we've done that, let me catch my breath. Next, we're going to talk about replaced staples. Now, are replaced staples allowed? Yes, to a certain extent. Now, they aren't allowed on a high-grade comic. High-grade, again, being very fine, plus or above. But on a very fine comic, you can have the staple replaced if it is of the same era. So if I have a 1960s comic and the staple is bad or and I need to replace it, I can replace it with another 1960s comic uh, staple, with another staple. And I do have staples. Um, DC comic, I label them by year and, uh, you know, I, they're 1965 National Periodicals comics. That came out of a 1965 comic that was in such bad shape that I couldn't do anything with it, so I just I pulled the staples, threw it off to the side for use for other things. Uh, so you can replace staples up to very fine. Now, it does affect the grade. I'm not going to lie to you on that. It does affect the grade. But the lower the grade, the less it affects it. And when you get down to low-grade comics, you know, we're talking good down. I would Actually, I would say good minus down. Yeah. You, you don't even, they don't even have to be the same year. Any, any staple is fine. You can just replace them. Uh, and it shouldn't affect the grade overall. Uh, you'll probably get a note stating that the staple was replaced, but other than that, it shouldn't affect it. Shouldn't be considered conserving or, uh, restoration. You're going to learn more about staples than you ever wanted to know. I'm going to tell you that right now as we get to discoloration. Discoloration is another thing that um, you can't have on a high grade comic. Uh, and what discoloration is when that s nice, bright, shiny, silvery color starts turning gray, starts turning gray or starts to dull a little bit, that's discoloration. Uh, generally, yeah, you could probably have it on a very fine plus, which would be high grade. Uh, but if I saw discoloration, I wouldn't grade it high grade. I would downgrade it into the very fine category at the very most. Uh, so discoloration, there's not much to say about it. Gray staples are discolored. Black staples would be discolored. Bright silvery staples are not discolored. Next thing we're going to get to is rust. What causes rust? Rust is caused by moisture. Now, you don't have to have a comic get wet to have rust. If it's in a high humidity area, it's liable to rust anyway. And what you'll see is little spots of rust, little speckles. Something like... Uh, uh, do a little drawing here. It might just be spots like that on the um, lateral bar of the staple or even on the extenders on the inside. Uh, and if you see that, you know you got rust, you know you got problems. Sometimes you can, it's surface rust and you can get it off with a cotton bud. Uh, one of these or the ones I prefer to use, which I can't get out anyway, one of those. 
Uh, sometimes you can get the rust off with that. You don't want to use sandpaper on your comics. <laughs> Uh, sometimes an eraser will take them off. You can sometimes get it off with an eraser. Uh, be very careful with that. Uh, you don't want to damage the comic itself while you're trying to get the rust off of it. The best way to do it is to remove the staples and, and plate them. Put a steel plate or, or a, a nickel plate or something over there or a steel plate over them. And then reinsert them. Yeah, you'll probably get dinged for for uh, replacing the staples, but I kind of think I'd prefer that to having rust on them uh, because rust leads to the next thing about staples, which is rust migration. Now, must migrate, mu uh, rust migration is uh, when the paper starts turning brown around the staple. Now, here's the thing about that. If the paper is not wet or damp, you won't get rust migration. So you want to keep them in a cool, dry environment. Rust migration happens when you get a rusty staple by wet paper or damp paper, and it just kind of flows into it. And I have I have any number of comics like that in the collection, especially from the uh, late 50s, early 60s. It just happens. Next thing we're going to go to, because I'm not going to show you an example of that because I don't have one with me right now. Uh, I, I was not prepared with that. Next, we're going to talk about staple alignment. And uh, made <laughs> this is where you get to make fun of my drawings. <laughs> As you can see, I have the front of the comic here and the back of the comic here, and this has four staples. That's not important because for right now, you are going to forget about this side and only worry about that side. That is front alignment. That is not good. That means the staple is misaligned to the front. And this is misaligned to the back. What you want is you want the staples aligned on the spine, and that would be center alignment. But there's another kind of alignment that you might want to worry about, and that is... I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's when the staples look more like this. You have one that's canted slightly to the left or to the right, and that is there's nothing you can do about it. It's bad alignment, and it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a progressive alignment is what it is. It's, you want the staples, if they're, if they're back aligned, you want them aligned with the spine. If they're front aligned, you want them vertical and aligned with the spine. You don't want them canted in either, either way if you can avoid it. This is a defect. Front alignment is a defect. Back alignment is a defect. And misalignment, um, and that's what I'm going to call it, is misaligned staples. But the misalignment is definitely a defect. What is not a defect is when the staples are aligned on the spine or very close to the spine. Again, get yourself a loop yourself a magnifying glass so that you can actually take a good look at this stuff. It's important. How does it affect the grade? Uh, you, you can't get above a 9.6, really. Uh, I'd be surprised if you got a 9.4 with misaligned staples. Um, it depends on who the grader is and how they feel that day, I guess. Which brings me to my next topic, which is elongation. Huh? Elongation? Yeah. If the staple hole is slightly elongated, the staple's going to move around a little bit, and the cover will move around a little bit, or that centerfold will move around a bit, and cause damage to the comic. And this is a serious defect for high-grade comics. You can't have it. It doesn't. No. Uh, matter of fact, I would put it I don't think I would grade it above a mid-grade. Uh, maybe a fine. Maybe. I don't think I'd go above a fine for it. Uh, the middle of the mid-grade, is it would be about the top that I would consider something like that. Brings me to my next 
which is a staple tear. Staple tear is when, and I should have gone with stress line first, but I didn't go with, I went with staple tear. Staple tear can be vertical or horizontal. If the staple tear is vertical, that means you probably should consider reinforcing it because it's going to get worse and it will probably end up on the side that is attached. You'll end up with horizontal tears as well. So that definitely should be addressed if you're into doing conservation work on the comet. Which brings us to staple stress lines. And these are exactly the same as regular stress lines. They're tiny little lines that don't break color, but they're at the staple at, at either uh, end of where the uh, lateral bar meets the extender. So at that corner there, if you have a little line there, that's a staple stress line. And that's, that's really about all I know about staples, which is a whole lot more than what you probably wanted to know. Uh, but that's okay. Um, because I had fun telling you, and hopefully you learned something from this, and you learned what you can do and what you can't do. There's not a whole lot you can do about staples. Your choices are reinforcement, cleaning, re removing them and cleaning them, or removing them and uh, uh, electroplating them, or replacing them. And that's really about your only choices for staples that you have. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, make sure if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I really need the, the su subscriptions. Uh, and uh, hit a like if you liked it. And if you have somebody you think might be interested in this, by all means, let me bore them as well. Or even if you just have somebody you want to annoy by sending this to them, that'd be okay too. <laughs> uh, have yourself a great week, and uh, we will see you on Friday, which hopefully... If everything goes according to plan, I might have a few things to show you. So uh, we'll look forward to that. And of course, Friday night, I'll be doing a Horizon Pictures auction, and I will be streaming that as well as him. So we'll see you on Friday, and hope you have a great week. See you then. Bye.